Thank you for a wonderful job. Amen. I had to go all the way to Elberton, Georgia, to find me a good job. Amen. Wonderful job. And I know she already said this. <laughs> I know she already said this, but happy birthday to my baby sister, to Kayla and Lisa Calhoun, who is 17 today. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to see all the beautiful ladies. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to see all of you all. Amen. I'm excited about the word today. And, and I know that you all are excited about this series, Love and Marriage. Uh, I was texting Elder Jones this week and people were looking for the sermon on YouTube. And I'm just blown away what God is doing with this series. In our Elberton location, Elder Jones, Lady C, and Brother Jeremy can tell you, if you've never been to our Elberton location, it is smaller than this location. Amen. And amen. Y'all can sit down. We can say, I'm going to go ahead and sit down. We'll just talk about it. <laughs> if you've never been to the Elberton location, it's smaller than this location. We don't have a fellowship hall or anything. All the we have is uh, the sanctuary, a small pastor office, a small youth room, and a small uh, finance room. And we had, I think someone counted uh, over 75 people trying to fit in that small sanctuary. Yes. How God just packed out the place yes. with men yes. and women. Yes. And I'm just excited about what the Lord is doing. <laughs> Some people ask, Pastor Lewis, why do you keep on having church in Lincolnton? Because I told them I'm called to Lincolnton. Yeah. Come on, I'm gonna stay here for something great. Come on, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not amazed. If we got 15 people, seven yeah. people, 25 people, yeah. I'm here to something great. Y'all hear me? I said I'm here to something great. Yeah. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> and I can appreciate y'all every Sunday. That's it. I'm fine. Yeah. Amen. I'm so excited. We got some noise in the building. Yeah. This Sunday. Last Sunday, Deacon Harris, I needed your help. <laughs> yeah. Last week, I, I, I did part one of the series entitled Boys to Men. Amen. And if you missed it, it is on YouTube. We talked about some things that men, if you are not a visionary, if you're not a teacher, mm -hmm. if you're not a leader, yes. if you're not a cultivator, yes. if you're not a provider, if you're not a protector within your own home, you are a boy. I don't care if you're 60, 65, 75. Advancement in age does not make you a man. Come on. I have seen some men or some males that's 25 years old and they are visionary, providers, cultivators, and all those things, and they are men. And I have seen some 65-year-old boys yeah. that still playing games. Yeah. So I talked about all of that last week. And if you missed that sermon, it is on our YouTube page. Please go view that sermon because I'm building up to something great. I'm building up to something great. I, I do want to put this because I see married people in the sanctuary. Uh, my last two sermons, um, why did I get married or why did I get married too? I need a lot of married couples in the building. Because I, I'm going to tell y'all, I, I know you all might think that marriage is beautiful. Come on. Oh, all right now. Marriage is a hard thing. It is. That is the truth. I love Lady Steve, but sometimes I know she be like, this man right here. Come on. We had a little argument on our way from church Friday. She didn't say a word. And I don't like when you silent. She came in the bathroom. We went 40 minutes without saying anything. What's wrong with you? And I snap. What's wrong with you? You. But I tell you about that. <laughs> because communication is very it important, is. and we're going to look at that. You all, marriage is not easy. No, no. Marriage is a ministry, no. and we're going to <laughs> and we're going to look at that in our last two series. I'm going to talk to Elder Lincoln, Elder Jones before I preach that because I'm sure they can give me a little bit of good nuggets. <laughs> Amen. Glad to see Gianna and Jazz. And I'm just glad to see all of y'all today. Amen. We're going to go to part two today. 
and, 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 and if you would, just stand with me. This is, again, just my framework. Normally, I would dig into the test and pull all kind of nuggets out of that, out of that test. But for the purpose of this series, I'm just going to read some scriptures that are going to serve as my frame. Turn in your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter number 2. Verse number 7. Glad to see Sister Sophie. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad to see you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. Got some colors. It's glad to see you. Amen. I'm going to leave it at that. Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 7. And it reads, are y'all good back there? Y'all cold or hot? Amen. Normally I freeze y'all back there, but y'all good. I, I think Taraka said it's chilly. Woo! Taraka, we don't get you an electric blanket. <laughs> Let's look at the word of the Lord. Now look at this man. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. That word form in the Hebrew means to create, to fashion, to organize, to purpose. Let's look at what God did to man with that word form because that's very important. Men, talk to us. God created us from the dust of the ground. And then he organized that dirt in such a way and he fashioned it in such a way that he put his breath in the inside of us. Yeah. And we became a living soul. Look how God organized our spiritual being. We are first spirit, soul, then body. Mm, look how God fashioned us, y'all. Spirit, soul, then body. And when God breathed or blew the breath of life into man, we became a living soul. Yeah. When God breathed into us, we got purpose. Yeah. That's all from that word form. Form in the Hebrew means to create, to fashion, uh, um, to organize, to purpose. Mm -hmm. But let's look at what he did to the woman. Genesis chapter number 2, uh, verse number 21 through 22. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made, look at that. He formed man, but he made woman. Made he a woman and brought her unto him. Stay right there. Let me talk about this word made. In the Hebrew, that word made means to build, to develop, to appropriate. Let's look at this now. Man, he, God, if you will, just threw us together. <laughs> he formed us. He just threw us together, put a little dirt on us put a little mud with us, made us a, a man and breathed into us and all that. But look what he did to the woman. He took his time. Yeah. I wish I had some yeah. Yeah. To make, I mean, make means to build. Yes, yes, yes. Th th that's why you all ladies, you got those curves. Oh. That hip. Come on now. You, you built just right. A lot of people trying to lose weight, but everybody don't want a Coca-Cola bottle. Not every man don't want no Coca-Cola bottle. Come on, somebody. Come on, man. We want something we can hang on to. <laughs> what, 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 what I want you to see from this story is, <laughs> is you all ladies, he, he took his time with you all. He, he built you just right. Yes. He developed you just right. He, yes. he made sure that you can give life. Look at the woman. Amen. He made you pretty. Yes. Yes. You're a pretty woman. Yes. 
You may not look like Beyonce and all these other women, but tell your neighbor, tell, ladies, I want you to look at your sister across the church and tell your sister, I'm a pretty woman. I'm a pretty woman. Uh, say it again. Say, I'm a pretty woman. Come on. You may be dressed in pink today, but tomorrow you might have on jeans, but regardless, you still are a pretty woman. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Pretty, pretty woman. That's my subject. Pretty woman. But when I was on my way here close to the church, <laughs> I started laughing out the blue and Lacey looked at me and I said, you know what? I thought about Martin when he played Shanene. <laughs> and he said, I'm a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm a lady. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. God, it's a beautiful thing where we can come together in your house of worship to worship you, to lift holy hands, to tell you thank you. Lord, yesterday as I was sitting down, I was just thinking about all of the people who have died in our community. But God, you are so great. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. We don't even deserve to be alive. Yes, say that, say that. Every day when we walk out the door, we're putting our life at risk. Yes, yes, sir. But I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Yes, Lord. When I wake up every morning and look at my beautiful wife, when I wake up every morning and I don't receive a phone call that somebody passed away, my, my family, my church family, my friends, I just say thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's cool. God, you are good. You are good, God. Hallelujah. You are good. I can't even put into words how good you are. And then you allow us to come to this place and experience your presence. God, I thank you. Now, Lord, as I preach and teach this sermon, you take control. You have your way in the name of Jesus. Although we may talk, we may laugh, but at the end of the service, we want to make sure that we have an encounter with you. Have your way in this place. As a man preaching to the ladies, God, I pray, God, that I speak with clarity, boldness, and understanding. I pray, God, that they only don't be hearers of the words, but doers as well. Open up their ears so they can be a better good woman, a better pretty woman. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Thank you. Thank you. You all, I, I, before I get into my sermon, I, I know I say this very often, but I really want to thank God for Justin. Yes. He has been with us. Jeremy and I was talking about him the other week. I think he, we've been in existence 10 years in August. Justin has been up with us eight years. Yes. And you all know that this boy is bad on those kids. Yes. He can go anywhere and play and get way more money than we give him. But he sits with me. Come on. And I thank y'all for just love you, man. Love you. Thank you. Let, let me go into the word of the Lord last week. And he know how to push me too. <laughs> Don't even need me to see it. Let, last week I mentioned this. All of you know that I grew up in the church. As a youngster, I was only exposed to older male preachers or preachers, male preachers that had been taught by old school preachers. Mm -hmm. And I told you last week that all the way up to my 20s, uh, I, I heard these preachers teach about the roles and the responsibilities of male and female. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as a child, it, it just didn't agree with my spirit. When I married Lady C, she asked me some of the Disney movies 
uh, like uh, the Little Mermaid and all that. She said, "Have you ever seen that?" I said, "Uh." -uh. <laughs> she said, "What kind of child? What you did in your childhood?" I said, "I'm a preacher." <laughs> I don't know some of these business but I was just preacher. Had my kid by, but my first member was my grandma, and then the pictures on the wall. So, 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 so I said that to say this. I think I was a little mature than most people for my most children my age at the time. Jack and them tried to get me to go outside, but I wasn't preach. And it's showing off now, right? <laughs> But it did not agree with my spirit because how the male preachers used to teach, teach it, when you really listen to it, they taught that the woman was nothing more than a man's slave. Jesus. The woman had to go home and do this, do that, do this, sit down, cook, do this, and do all that. And that just did not agree with my spirit. And, and my heart goes out to women. It really does. I was raised by a single mother and my grandmother was, um, was in the house and I know what it is to struggle. I know what it is for a single parent to raise a child and, and, and I think it is something that most ladies married to a man that is suffering in silence at home then have to come to church and be belittled by a pastor that's ignorant of the word of God. Yeah. You don't know what another lady is going through yeah. at home. Because they got a man don't mean that everything yeah. good and good. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So, 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 so that just, that, that did not agree with my spirit. And the Lord allowed me, I told you all this last Sunday, in the last four years to do a deep study on what it is to be a man of God, a manhood and womanhood and build a family. And out of that, this series was birthed about love and marriage. I told you last week, I cannot talk about love without talking about a man, a woman, and a man. I have to talk about your roles and who you are for you to understand love, because if you don't know who you are, how can you love someone else? If you can't love yourself, you can't love no one else. So let me first show you who you are. Come on. And then once I show you who you are, you can fall in love with yourself even the more. Because you're a pretty lady. Yeah. I don't have the time that I really want to dig into this. I don't have the time because we have another engagement later on this evening. And I told Lady C, I think I mentioned this to Elder Jones, and I probably did. I told Elder Jones that Elder Lacker so much. We text, and then Elder Jones hit me up at church, and we just don't know how to stop talking. <laughs> I really, I, it is one of my goals to really do a family matter conference that, that we go to Jaffa Island or somewhere and I can do a seminar to teach the men and teach the women and, and do merit retreats and all that. Y'all think y'all would like that? And, and, and we really want to do that and that's one of my visions. I don't have the time that I really want to deal with all this today, but let me give you some good points, I hope, and then you can leave here knowing that you have been in the presence of God yeah. and know a little more of what it means to be a lady, yeah. a pretty woman. Yeah. It is something interesting, Elder Jones, and I noticed through the word of God, and we're going to move quickly through these scriptures. When you look at Genesis 1, chapter number 1, and then you look at Genesis chapter number 2, what is happening in Genesis chapter 1, God is Moses, because we believe Moses wrote this. Uh, Moses is, is writing about creation in chapter number 1. When you get to chapter number 2, he is also talking about creation, but he's given a more depth or more details about creation of humanity. So in chapter number 1, he's really focusing on creation of the heaven and the earth. But when we get in chapter number 2, he's really given more information about God's creation for humanity. So it's pretty much telling the same story, but, but it given more detail depending on what chapter you're looking at. So, so look at, let's look at Genesis chapter number one. This is, if this is not good to you when God shows me this, I hope it is, but it was good to me. Let's, let's look at something. Genesis chapter number one, verse number four. And every time G, um, Elder Jones get to that word good, I want y'all to say it with her. Now, this is when God was creating the heaven and the earth. And look, look at this, Elder Jones. Can you see Elder? Yes, okay, yes, ma'am. Last, last time I had to the rear, I had to make you move over. <laughs> Go ahead, Elder Jones. And God saw the light, 
that it was good. It was what? Good. It was what? Good. All right, read, Elder. And God divided the light from the darkness. All right, now let's go to our next verse. The next verse that I, that I have. Verse number 10. We're skipping it because I really want to show you this. Verse number 10. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the water called he seeds. Mm -hmm. And God saw that it was good. Come on now. So, so when God created, in verse number four, we saw that at, at, at that point that he had created light and it was good. Right now he's creating the water and he putting the land and the separated and God said it is good. All right, next verse. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven yeah. to give light upon the earth. Yeah. And to rule over the day and over the night yeah. and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. Next verse, Elder. I mean, next verse. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the water brought forth abundantly. Yeah. After their kinds. And every wing fowl after his kind. Yeah. And God saw that it was good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next verse. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cow after their kind. Yeah. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Yeah. And God saw that it was good. Yeah. yeah. Next verse. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. Come on now, yeah. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So after God created everything, he, he saw that it was good. Yeah. The sixth day, he looked at everything that Ooh, he created. And he God. said, it's very, very good. Very, very, very good. But look at chapter number two. Mm -hmm. Verse number 18. Elder Jones. And the Lord God said, it is not good Woo! that man should be alone. Stop right there. Yeah. Did y'all see this? It's not good. <laughs> so he created the light. He, he separated the uh, water from the land. He did all that. And at the end of his creation, he saw that everything was good. But when he got to man, man was good. But he said, it's not good that man should be alone. Everything else is good all the way up to this chapter. Yes, that he said it's not good, it's not good. for man to be alone. Amen, amen. I want you to know, and you all have heard this multiple times, a man needs a good woman. Yes, sir. Yeah. And a good woman needs a godly man. Now I know we got this cliche going around saying I can do bad all by myself. That sounds good, but that's not biblically correct. Yeah. Now, now you probably don't went through multiple men. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yes, and, and, and maybe something was wrong with you. Come on. Yes, Come on. Come on. Yes, but one of those men would definitely be a good man. Yes, Come on. Yes, Come on. It's not good that man should be alone. Uh -huh. It's not good. Not good. A biblical definition of a man is by Dr. Tony Evans, and I quote, I'm sorry, a woman, excuse me. A biblical definition of a woman is by Dr. Tony Evans, and it reads, a woman is a female who consistently lives under the rule of God and the lordship of Jesus Christ over every, every area of her life. Uh -huh. Stop right there. You can write that down. Yeah. It, 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 if you notice from last week, it is the same definition from last week for the men. Mm -hmm. And it goes for the women. But you got to know your place. Yes. Yeah. You, you must know your place. Yeah. And once you know your place, I think Elder Jones and Elder Lantern, Minister Pashel, that we can be like we read in Proverbs last week. We can build a house with, on, with, with wisdom. Yeah. Come on, we can get the, the, the foundation established with understanding and get the room filled up with knowledge. But women, you got to know your place and men yeah. got to know their place. Yeah. The most important part, a, part of a structure of a building is the foundation. Yeah. I laid the foundation last week with the men. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. 
Now, now I'm trying to build the house. Ladies, it's up to you to rest on the foundation. The hard work is with the man. Not saying that being a woman is not hard. I'm sure it is hard. But the hardest part is with the man. We got to lay a foundation. And for the women, you come to build on what we have already laid. Are y'all with me? So it's not good that man should be alone. Amen. We're going to dive right into it. Not to give you much fluff. I want to dive right into it. So let's, let's go to my first point. My first point is pretty women are leaders. Mm -hmm. right there. Pretty, pretty women are leaders. Yes. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 26, we know this, and we have been given our we have given our attention to this. And God said, "Let us make man uh, in our image, after our likeness, and let them." That word "man" is not the gender of man, but the species of man. So, about let us make a mankind in our image, after our likeness, and let them, mankind, male and female, have dominion. Don't miss that. We read that, and we think that most people would say that this is talk about the. Thank you. The, the gender of man, but it's talking about the species of man. Talk about mankind. God wants us, male and female, to have dominion, have authority on the earth. Yes, yes, Don't miss yes. that now. He wants us to have authority over the earth. Next verse. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, uh, over the cattle, and let uh, and over all the earth, and let every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Next verse. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God um, created he, him, male, and what? Female, them, he, um, created he, them. God created male and female to have dominion on the earth. He created us, y'all, ladies. He created you just like the man. He want the man to have leadership on the earth, and he also want the female to have leadership on the earth. Yeah. What did you say, Pastor Carlos? Go, verse, go back to verse number 26. God said, and let them. Yeah. 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 Not just the man have leadership, but let them, the female as well, have a leadership. Now I can go sit down. He want us, male and female, to have leadership on the earth. You a leader, pretty woman. Now I want to make sure that I'm biblically sound. Don't leave here misunderstanding what I'm saying. I want to make sure that I'm biblically sound. Ladies, you are not the leader by position. You're not. You are not the leader by position. Men, we are the leaders by position. I, I want to make sure that I'm biblically sound. Because he made the man first. Right, right. Yeah. So we are the head by position. Yeah. But for years, male preachers and other people, I'm not yes. just going to yes. knock down male preachers mm -hmm. because I know they don't come for me, but they better come ready. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. For years, men in our ignorance have been trying to suppress mm -hmm. a component that is in every woman's spiritual DNA. Mm -hmm. And that is leadership. Mm -hmm. That's why I emphasize them. You have lead, um, women, pretty women, you are a leader just like a man. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure, like I said, I'm biblically sound. You are not the leader by position. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're not, you're not the head. Yeah. Come on, you may think you the head. <laughs> Ephesians 5 23 says, mm -hmm. For the husband is the head. Read it. So the man is the head of the woman. 
We are the leaders. Men, we are the leaders by position. Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Now, I want you to know something. Men and women leadership work hand in hand. If I can say this, they are equal, but it has different rules. Mm -hmm. Now, Pastor Colas, if I'm not pretty women, I'm speaking like I'm one of you, you may say, now, Pastor Colas, if I'm not a leader by position, then how am I a leader? You are a leader by influence. Mm -hmm. Not saying that the head can't have influence, because he can but ladies, God has given you leadership yes. through the power of influence. Yes. Yes. Let, me, let me work this out. and yes. You're going gonna to see it by the end of the sermon. Mm -hmm. now, now, I put a little note in my sermon when I got to certain point. I said, now work it out, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, I got this in my note. Now work it out, Pastor. So let me work it out. <laughs> On my job, I'm gonna work. It, I'm gonna give you three examples: my job, our the church, and my home. On my job, I am the executive director of Lincoln County Family Connection. Mm -hmm. I am the head of the organization. Mm -hmm. That's my position. Mm -hmm. I'm a male, and I'm the head. Not saying that the female can be the head, but just for the purpose of this sermon, I got to point out that I'm a male, and I'm the head of the Lincoln County Family Connection. That is my position. Okay? I'm the head of that organization. Yeah. Underneath me, I have two ladies that works at the bell ringer. Because mm -hmm. I'm over the bell ringer. Two ladies work at the bell ringer and they are working under me. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is what happened. I get my orders. I look at what things going on, what how things are happening, and I make a decision. And what I do since I'm the head, I give my order and my influence to the two ladies that work under me. Mm -hmm. Since they are the leaders at the bell ringer, they influence the people on the dam. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. But who I influence? I influence them, the two women, because they work underneath me. Mm -hmm. I give them order, and since they have influence, they influence the people underneath them. Because mm -hmm. I am the head by position. Let me give you another example. Try to clear it up. Here at the church, we're not like your normal church. We don't have meet with the deacons and all that. We, we, our structure is a little different. We, we have a board. And on the board, we have three ladies. <clears throat> Elder Lackett, Elder Jones, and Deacon S. Allen. I am the head of this church. I am the senior pastor of this church. That's my position. I am the head. But when I have a board meeting, I influence them. Amen. Mm. I give them orders. I tell them how we're going to move. I influence them. And in return, those three ladies influence the members. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But they are not the head by position. Yeah. They are leaders by influence. Yeah. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? Yeah. At home, I am the head of the house. Yeah. I am the head of the house. And when we have children, I impact Lady C. I influence it, Lady C. And anytime I want to do something, Lady C influence anybody who comes in our house because she received her order from the head, me, because I'm the husband and I'm the man. Amen. But she's also a leader because she leads by influence. Yes. Yes. Do y'all see what I'm doing? That is so good. I, that's worth a seed off. <laughs> You, you got to ask yourself, why did Satan approach Eve? Mm -hmm. I'm going to work this out. Why did Satan approach Eve? Yes. Your average person would say, use this scripture to justify. 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, likewise, um, husband, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge. Give honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Yeah. They try to 
pull that out. Let Rika, 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 vessel, yeah. as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. I'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about why uh -huh. God get married. But they try to, they try to use this Rika vessel as their excuse of why Satan approached Eve. Uh -huh. You know the woman is a Rika vessel. Uh -huh. And they're trying to make that scripture so spiritual when it's not that spiritual. Because when he talk about the woman is the weaker vessel, he's talking about the woman's strength. Woo. Generally speaking, the man, men are stronger than women. And so they talk about the weaker vessel in that part. So men, we got to look out for the woman because they are physically weaker than us. That's all they're talking about. Nothing else. That we can build support. That's all that part is talking about. Nothing else. Don't come here trying to make that spiritual. Yeah. Have y'all ever been around people that trying to make everything spiritual? Yeah. Yeah. Like Lady C said, some people try to be, so Jeremy said this, some people try to be so deep and they ain't deeper than bad here. <laughs> come on, it's nothing more to that we can build support than that. So why did Satan approach Eve then? Uh -huh. yes. Satan understood something about a woman mm -hmm. that we are yet to discover by the woman. Come on. That is, right. women lead by influence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Men, you may say you're the head of the house, and I hope you are, because that's biblically correct. But let that woman come in with an attitude. <laughs> you may say I'm the head, but if she come in with an attitude, she's going to influence everybody in that house. She's going to change the, the atmosphere. Yeah. Come on, pretty women. Yeah. 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 Now, now I, 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 hear, I hear some people, I heard one woman tell me, now, Pastor Coles, my husband may, may be the head, but I'm the neck. <laughs> <laughs> so you wrong. Because that's exactly what happened to Eve. Uh -huh. Look at Adam, who was the head by position. Uh -huh. God gave the word. Don't touch that tree uh -huh. in the middle of the garden of knowledge of evil. Right. He gave the word to the man. Uh -huh. The man was to teach the woman, Eve, we are to eat of any tree except of this tree. Right. But in chapter number three, look at what happened. I don't have it, but I'm paraphrasing. In chapter number three, look at who Satan approached in the form of a servant. Uh -huh. yeah, Eve. Yeah. Because he understood the influence of a woman. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. This is good, isn't it, Elder John? Yeah. 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 This is so good, she got to fit some masks. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look at this now. Look, look, pay attention. Look. Satan showed up in the form of servant, yes, approached Eve because yes. he understood her influence. Yes, they had a big, a long conversation. Yes, Adam yes. was looking. Yes, he knew what the, um, they were doing. Mm -hmm. Adam walked up to Eve. Eve said, huh, let's eat this fruit. Uh -huh. Gave something. Look at her influence. Uh -huh. And he knew, Adam knew what the Lord told him. Yes, yes. But sit the women lead by influence. Yes, right. I'm on somebody. She influenced the man to go against the word of God. Now, women, if we can get this right, I know it's come from the curse that you think you the head, but if we can get this right, think about if you know your place. And when I say your place, I try to stay away from that because some people try to make that it, it kind of like a servant language, and, and I don't mean it that way. But 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 let me explain it this way. I, I, I was thinking to myself, I said, now, it would be nice if I could change the diagram of the Christian family. Because many of us see pictures of, of, of when they do a diagram. I had one on my phone I meant to put on there. But they would have like Christ the head. Then they would have the man then underneath the man, they would have the woman. Y'all know? 
Y'all see what I'm talking about? Then underneath the woman, they would have the children. Mm -hmm. And biblically speaking, it's not like that. Come here, ladies, see. God is, God is my head. God is my covering. Yeah. Since I married Lady C, Lady C, I am Lady C covering. Right, oh my God. And see, she in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Many of y'all think, men think that the woman is underneath them. Yeah. Come up here. You right there. We equal. My God, my God. <laughs> and how God works. God gives me the vision, yeah. and in return, I reach across, yeah. Watch out. Uh -huh. and I impact her. Yeah. And when we have children, she impact the children. Yeah. 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 How it works, ladies, I influence, I'm the head uh -huh. by position, I influence her. Yeah. She influence out and down. Yeah. I get my orders from God. Yeah. Reach over to my other half. All right. Cause she my other half, not my other foot. I impact her, yeah. and if she lines up with my fist, she got to see a woman and finds her lordship under Jesus Christ. That's the definition by Dr. Tony Evans. Says when she get in line, what well, first when the man get in line with God. Yes, the woman can get in line with the man because the man is in line with God. Yes, yes, yes. And notice, thank you, Lacey. Notice I'm saying that she influenced out and down, yes. not down and out. Yes, yes, yes. Out and down. Her influence should go out, spread across our home, out of our home, and the residue should fall on people. Yes, yes, yes. When you have a biblical home, a, a, a Christian home, you will understand that the love, start, love, charity starts where, oh. and then it spread where. Oh. That means it goes out, yes. and then it falls. Yes. 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 Leave it, pretty women. You better know.